there are quite a few Greek gods and mythology is just something that I've always thought was cool and been interested in read the book years ago um, English class like probably everybody else did and I just always thought it was neat um, the stories that went behind him so I'll talk a little bit uh, here and there about some of the more popular and specific ones as we go along in some episodes but I thought it would be nice to start from the very beginning as to who is who uh, literally or who is whom um, in this scenario because we have Greek gods and Roman gods and even though they're the same person a lot of people get them confused I feel like the Greek uh, is more popular but the Romans sometimes can be interchangeable and just who is who in the story it's a it's a who's who of gods if you will uh, little g and talking about that uh, uh, what they are known for and maybe some um, things that go with them in terms of icons and um, what their famous background is so I, I think I first got hooked with Clash of the Titans back in the I think it was 1980 Burgess Meredith and um, Harry Hamlin although they have remade that I think Sam Worthington and it's it's okay it's cool I'm not gonna lie but I really I really dug the original better so if you like Clash of the Titans or that was kind of neat to you I find myself saying unleash the Kraken all the time when somebody's angry that I'm in the room with Uh, there's just a lot of characters that come into play so these are really just focusing on the gods that lived in Mount Olympus um, above the Ethereum as they like to call it which was considered the heavens so Zeus, of course, we kind of start there. Zeus is a.k.a. Jupiter in the Roman, so I'll be giving the Greek first and then the Roman. So Zeus is known as Jupiter in, in Roman world. God of the sky, he's the chief deity, and the lightning bolt and the eagle are generally symbols of his. So when you think of the whole like crashing lightning, uh, it's usually Zeus. Um, he was the, the, the king, if you will, of the gods, the chief god. Hera. Uh, his sister, we'll talk more about that later, also known as Juno, typically known for women, marriage, and childbirth. Athena, also known as Minerva, was the goddess of war, handicraftsmanship, that's quite a word, uh, practical reasoning. Uh, you might say she was the MacGyver of the situation, or the MacGyveress, as the case may be, because following her up is Ares, aka Mars, and also the god of war, and spirit of battle so he'd be the war cry if you will as well as uh the actual uh, reasoning behind the war but she would be more handling the actual war uh so they make an interesting couple uh aphrodite which in roman terms would be venus love beauty and all things of the uh the fairness uh, of people if you will apollo known as phoebus in uh, Roman times, uh, divine distance, meaning making mortals aware of their guilt. Um, He was just the person that uh, made you kind of have a conscience and think about what you may have done uh, correctly or not. And a lot of times um, he was the intermediary between mortals and Mount Olympus. He sort of spoke for the people and translated if you will into god speak and then the gods would relay a message to him and then he would speak in a way that mortals could understand then we have helios um also known as soul as in not just that cool little kia vehicle with the hamsters but uh no helios meaning sun uh he's the sun god also known as a titan one of the bigger gods titan being large he generally was known as a uh, chariot wielder who would go from east to west every day uh, often in a big chariot like pulling a big cup that he would stand in so uh, when you say of a heliocentric universe the same idea appeals that uh, that a a sun-centered universe which took them a long time to come upon because people thought the earth was flat people thought that uh, the universe revolved around earth all not true despite what some people may still argue Uh, Following that up was Artemis. Artemis, also known as Diana. She was the goddess of hunting, um, wild animals, vegetation, and chastity. It's quite a a conglomerate of things there, and they're sort of all over the place, but um, the hunt, if you will, that's really the the big key there. Selene, um, also known in some circles in Roman as a different Diana, but also known as Luna, 
which makes more sense to me because Luna, based on the Latin, is moon, and she's the moon goddess. Um, typically worshipped during new and full moons, but uh, some name crossover there. But again, I would go with Luna because obviously that, uh, even in Spanish and Italian, would equate to this day. Hermes, he's quite the character. Also known as Mercury. Um, very big uh, list for him. Luck, um, wealth, uh, languages, travel, sleep, which makes no sense to me, but okay. <laughs> um, track, as in not just the sport, but also tracking. No accident that the FTD uh, floral people use the winged foot to say that you could track their package and get the flowers there faster. Um, he's also the patron of shepherds. He uh, is the patron of thieves, and he invented the liar, um, L-Y-R-E, not your liar as in not telling me the truth, but the musical instrument, and he was the messenger of Mount Olympus. So that winged foot came into play because he was always racing so fast back and forth to and fro uh, Mount Olympus because he was delivering the messages from the gods. So he had quite a big laundry list of things that he was in charge of. Hades, also known as Pluto, was the god of the underworld, and the word itself indicates unseen, and it also can mean the giver of wealth. So it makes sense because if he was in the, the underworld, generally the behind-the-scenes guy, not seen, but um, kind of like playing off of Fortune's Wheel, as I've mentioned in uh, different uh, circles before, pardon the pun, about the wheel in the sky or having a... Uh, luck so if you brag about it you end up on the the destitute part of things and if you're sad and you're upset about how little you have then fortune's wheel will spin to uh, give you more wealth and more prosperity so um, always in motion fortune's wheel kind of a play on that and the underworld had a lot to do with that it kind of saw um, your circumstance and could put you back in motion in that wheel in the sky which is constantly uh, moving dionysus also known as bacchus is the god of wine and pleasure. I think he got a pretty good gig, I'm not going to lie. Um, so he's always pictured uh, with grapes or a goblet or some sort of a wine cup. Um, then we move into Hephaestus, also known as Vulcan, the fire god, but patron of craftsmen, and he's more on the volcanic side of things. So um, his workshop was literally a volcanic workshop. And I know they've played off of this in a lot of movies recently, uh, certainly with Thor when they went to the uh, forge to try and find the new axe and things like that. You see this uh, play around a lot, forged in fire, that kind of idea. So it was using the power of the volcanoes to make whatever um, uh, craftsman tool in order for living and or war. Hestia, also known as Vesta, uh, is the goddess of the hearth and protector of home and state. I find that interesting because, again, on modern day, when you think about um, Wonder Woman and Gal Gadot wields this uh, uh, lanyard and the lasso, and she says, you know, I command you by Hestia, uh, which is a whole play on the Amazons and the ancient Greek goddesses that they're confined to this uh, uh, island. I would have thought more with truth, but it's more protection. So that makes sense because Amazons are supposed to be the protectors. But it's really hearth and home, so um, security for your home, if you will. But she always says, I command you by Hestia. Demeter, also known as Ceres in Roman, another god of agriculture, grain, and bread, specifically grains for some reason, um, really an outside kind of a guy, and not... Uh, a person that would um, be involved in the war side of things, but more in the day-to-day -day living and, and uh, provisions, if you will. Poseidon, everybody knows him, also known as Neptune. He was the god of sea and waters, but also horses and earthquakes, which that's a little lesser known. Um, he had a lot of talents. He could shape shift, obviously wielding the mighty Triton, um, had the Trident all the time. Um, and he had a lot more power than most of the other gods um, and always had the ability to 
manipulate not just the seas, but the creatures within. So you might say a modern day Aquaman. Um, Heracles, AKA Hercules. So it's interesting. The Greek spelling is a little bit off compared to the Roman spelling, but they're so similar compared to a completely different name in the most of these situations. Uh, he is the God of strength and heroes. So when you think about James Campbell and the hero's journey and that concept of every man going forward to whatever their quest is, you generally think of Hercules. You know, he had to go do this thing and so much stuff gets in his way. So that's your, your classic hero. And, and we as Americans just love a good underdog hero story. Um, Eros, which would be Cupid in Roman world. Everybody knows that guy. So carnal love, if you will, arrow to the heart. He could make people fall in love with you and just uh, give you a zing with the heart and, with an arrow and then you would fall in love with that person. And uh, last but not least, um, we have our last two follow-ups. Persephone, um, also known as uh, Proserpina, is a goddess of agricultural, uh, all things agricultural, um, again with the grain with all that grain I guess because it was uh, plentiful from the ground in order again for provisions for people to survive and she ruled the underworld with Hades she was his wife so it's um, rumored that the seasons came about after she was allegedly kidnapped so Hades would like take her back to the underworld and like she would make these cameos and I guess they showed up four times a year because the seasons were attributed to her appearances or not and last but not least, they can't be wrong, Nike, also known um, as uh, Victoria, meaning victory. So we have that idea of Nike, just do it, um, which is a great capitalized slogan for the last 50 years. And, uh, you know, literally victory. So being able to um, overcome whatever the, the thing may be, and that's a big, uh, a big shoe to fill. So th those are just some gods. I'd say like the basic 20, if you will. Of course, there's more, but they are both the Greek and Roman names. A couple of things that um, I just wanted to point out. Zeus, Poseidon, Demeter, Hera, Hestia, and Hades were all siblings and all children of Kronos and Rhea. They were the parents. And Kronos, you think, god of time. So there's a whole backstory there. Talk about an ungrateful child. But <laughs> those, those guys were together. So those were the, uh, the big six, if you will. And they uh, had a little bit more power uh, than, than others, and they kind of ran the show. So they were all um, children of Kronos and, and Rhea, and it's worth mentioning. The other thing that comes up a lot, just again in terms of quick uh, modern-day example, I always like the band Styx. Well, the River Styx was supposedly the separation between our world and the underworld. And Sharon was the gatekeeper, if you will. He was the ferryman that you had to pay to get across from the earthly side to the underworld side. And very often you see um, coins placed over the eyelids of the dead so that when Sharon came to collect, if you will, kind of a grim reaper, but not quite, he would take that payment to cross the body over to the underworld. And if there wasn't a payment, then that person was left to wander, kind of lost in between zones. You see a nod to this in the Matrix when uh, Neo is shot, and then in the end, he's sort of in a coma, but not, you can't get from the trainman area. Um, a nod to uh, Johnny Depp in, in the movie From Hell. He, uh, he's talking about Jack the Ripper. The whole movie is centered on Jack the Ripper, and he uh, puts coins in his hand for his partner to find in, in the end of the movie. And he places them over his eyes because he would do that throughout the victims all throughout the, uh, the movie. So again, just some modern day examples where you would see this, but I just always had an affinity for the band sticks. However, that's where it came from. So it's kind of neat um, that you would think about a separation of uh, one side to the other. And that's, that's how you got there. The fairy men, if you will. So these are just some uh, explanations of, what you probably see a lot of, they uh, use uh, different names for things or references with everything in uh, Greek and Roman mythology, and it's commonplace in our world, but maybe you didn't stop to think about where it came from or how that background originated. If you like this type of content, scare the like button into turning blue and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.